a particular phenomenon actually to this to this recent uprising that I haven't really seen before, which is the American police specifically targeting journalists. So on Friday's show, we showed you the clip of the CNN reporter getting arrested live on air. That was particularly controversial because he was a black man, the reporter. But there have been many more instances since then of US law enforcement targeting journalists. So this will obviously not be happening. The point of freedom of the press is that journalists are able to put themselves in situations where political conflict is going on and step aside from it to say, we're, we're one step removed. We're here to document it. You cannot, well, we don't think you should be repressing processes anyway, but there's a, a there's a whole new level of, of outrage when it comes to the police actively repressing and suppressing the ability of, of journalists to cover these demonstrations. And this is happening over and over again. Um, we're going to go through a few examples. There are many. Um, so this is a WCCO reporter in Minneapolis who got arrested for doing his job whilst trying to cooperate with law enforcement. Go! go. Where do I go? I'm with WCCO. That's a WCCO car. Okay, 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 okay. okay, 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 okay. Joan, Joan! So, so I'm, just, I'm just trying to find my producer, get down, you're under arrest. What are we watching? Let's look at a vice reporter who identified himself as media and is told by the officer, I don't care. I'm pressed. I don't care. Get down. Okay, I'm down. I'm down. Okay. Thank you. I am pressed. Please just. <laughs> So that was someone who made it very, very clear he was the press. He still got pepper sprayed in the eye on camera, luckily. Um, we can also look at MSNBC reporters. They came under fire from Minneapolis and Kentucky law enforcement. So we're we're doing this to Step back, get back, get back, get back. Your head, your head, he's head. Step back. Step back. I got it, I got it, I got it. Whoa, watch it, guys. We got gas here. All right, back up, back up, back up, back up. All right, they are now moving toward us. They are now moving toward us. There was... Come on, they're shooting at us. Okay, they're shooting, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's Put your helmets on. All right, there has been no provocation, Joshua. There was nothing that happened whatsoever. The police pulled into this intersection unprovoked right into the middle of the crowd, split the crowd, started firing in both directions. They now have fired at us. Plenty of time here. Are you okay? I'm getting shot. I'm getting... Kate, Katie, are you okay? Rubber bullets, rubber bullets. It's okay. It's those pepper bullets. It's those pepper are they, bullets. That who are they the aiming that at? Now you're shooting at the photographer. At us, like directly at us. Directly Why at us. Why are they yeah. doing that? You're shooting at our crew. So in Minneapolis, they were reportedly shooting rubber bullets in Kentucky pepper bullets. So that's a sort of, I think it doesn't hurt that much to get hit with it, but it has the same effect as, as pepper spray. So it's got that chemical in which sort of irritates your eyes and throat. Um, we've now got a CBS crew here who get shot by what they again think are rubber bullets. Um, they aren't standing in a crowd. So this time it really looks like they're being targeted intentionally. Us in, dude. So there they they received no verbal commands from police. This is what the CBS news crew said. They were they would have left if they'd been asked to. Police were aware the governor has exempted or had exempted media from the curfew. Um, we can also now look at I want to injure their sound engineer. Let's take a look at a BBC cameraman. Obviously, it's not just American journalists getting targeted. We can talk about you know the political implications of that in a moment. Uh, this is a BBC cameraman in Washington. And a British photographer, Adam Gray, was arrested, had his mask removed, was placed in a large holding cell of 50 to 70 people with zero social distancing, held in custody for eight 
hours. Uh, so obviously, uh, people talk about these protests risking spreading coronavirus. It tends to be the police that push people together, often in inside spaces that create the actual threat. Let's go to a quote from Gray. The whole time, can we get this up? The whole time that I was being arrested, I said I was press. They just didn't seem to care. I get that in the heat of the moment, you might get pushed or grabbed. But as soon as you say that you're press, it normally stops there, but not this time. And there are so many more instances of this. I mean, they're getting shared widely on, on, on Twitter. Journalists being targeted, they shouldn't be. This is the point of having a press card and having it, you know, there's normally signage that says you're press. The idea is that the police aren't supposed to target you. Um, we're going to go to just one more example, though, which is probably the most egregious example of, of, of the police repressing journalists during these this last round of, of uprisings. So this is Linda Tirado. Um, she is now, she's a photojournalist, she was out reporting on, 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 on the protests, and she is now permanently blinded in one eye after being hit by what she believes was a rubber bullet. That was again by Minneapolis police. Now, you know, American police being racist, that's, that's no surprise to any of us. And I think one of the reasons why we, we're seeing more of it than we used to is because of video cameras, because there's CCTV mm. everywhere and people are getting it on their phones. Um, I think it was Will Smith who said, you know, people, the, uh, more people aren't getting shot and beat up by the police. It's just getting filmed now. But this seemingly intentional targeting of journalists mm. seems kind of new and kind of, su you know, surprising to me. I'm sort of confused. Like, what's what's going on? I mean, it, one, it seems completely stupid. Like, if you are, you know, on, on one level fighting a PR war, as you were talking about when they, you know, they try and castigate Mark Duggan as the biggest criminal in Europe when he was nothing of the sort, then you would expect police in this battle of hearts and minds to be particularly nice to the yeah. media, um, you know, to treat them in an almost misleadingly pleasant way, you know what I mean? Whereas now they are shooting at them, not with live rounds, but, you know, we can we can see from this person who's been blinded in one eye, that doesn't mean it's not dangerous. Well, what's your analysis of what's going on here? Well, yeah, no, it's, it's, it couldn't be further removed from the sort of embedded journalism that you would have seen in the early 2000s, uh, which was purely about uh, public relations. Uh, and there was really no critical distance between the journalist and uh, the police, or often it would be a military intervention overseas. Uh, and so from that perspective, I think you're right. It, it, it's quite um, counterproductive from the police's uh, perspective. But I think it tells us a couple of things. The first is the stakes are really high here. And actually, this is this is an uprising. You know, there are protests and so on. This is a, a genuine threat to the present order of things in the United States. Uh, and so the police are behaving in ways which they, they normally wouldn't do. That's not to say they don't administer a great deal of violence every day of the week. They do, particularly against people of colour, particularly against working class communities. But I think you're right to say this is this seems quite unique, the way they're dealing with MSNBC, CNN, Deutsche Welle. I mean, we didn't even show all of them. Uh, people are losing eyes and so on. Uh, and so I think it, it, it talks to the stakes. But then secondly, I think it also talks to the fact that you've seen a, a basic dissolution in the norms of what we would think consider of democratic life in, the, in America. You know, I'm the press and I do genuinely believe now that the police in the United States don't really care. They don't really think of any democratic norms or I have to treat this person in a particular way. I'm sure a certain percentage do. But I think I think when you when you tell police, and I'll be talking about this with a guest, Alex Vitale, tomorrow night on Navarra Media, I'll be interviewing him. He's got a great book on policing. When you tell the police that they are warriors, that they're the thin blue line between chaos and order, when you arm them uh, like an occupying army, uh, I think this is how they will inevitably behave. Uh, and it's not just towards uh, protesters. It's not just towards working class communities, people of colour. It's to everyone. Uh, and I, I do think that's ultimately going to work against them. I think it's going to really undermine any consent uh, that the police have got in the United States. You can't treat CNN, you can't arrest a CNN reporter. I mean, the establishment's meant to be there to have your back. Uh, it seems incredibly stupid. Uh, and it, I think I think it speaks to the, the extent of this crisis. This is very much an existential crisis for the American state.